Module 2, Mechanical Exercise. Hi, this is Joe Cerrone. This is CAD 116. And as you can see, I'm opened up to Module 2. And we're going to go through and work on this mechanical part, Exercise 2-1. If you click on the part, you can print this out. What it is, is it's a mechanical drawing with uh, decimal dimensions and a, uh, a 3D solid in the top corner. To begin this drawing, we need the title block. And so what we'll do is we'll click on the title block. We'll select Open. And I've got my AutoCAD drawing already open, so it opens within that drawing. And you'll notice that we are in paper space. Uh, paper space has the title on the drawing. And we're going to draw that object by going and selecting the Model Space tab. Again, make sure that your interface is set up like mine. If you click on this down arrow here, you can go and set so that you see the menu bar. I'm going to turn it off so you can see what it looks like without it. And then I'm going to enable it, show menu bar. And it's a good way to keep track of all the commands. You can get all the commands through the pull-down menu. We're going to start off by drawing this object. We're on the Home tab on the Object layer, and my Object Snap is on, my Polar is on, my Dynamic Input is on, and my Line Weight is on. And those are the only settings that we'll need to get this drawing started. I'll select the Line command, I'll sp select the spot, I'll track north on that, and I will put in the first dimension, which is 3. I'll track to the right, put in the next dimension, which is also 3. Track down. And I can also acquire points. If I swipe like this, it will line them up for me, usually. I'm just going to type 3. Didn't quite get it. And then I'll go to this point at the beginning here. I'll hit escape, pick up the cursor, and so I've got a 3x3 three three square. What I'll do next is I'll put these chamfers on in the top corners. And so what I'll do is I'll select the chamfer command. And I will program the options for the distance to be 0.25 for both of them. And that would be the horizontal and vertical distance. And then I'll select this line. Notice that there's a square box. When you have a square box in the selection, that means it's looking for you to choose an existing drawing entity. Rather than go back to the chamfer command, I'm going to right click and I'm going to select repeat chamfer and I'm going to select this corner here also. And so I'll get my quarter inch chamfer on that. And then down at the bottom right hand corner, I have a quarter inch radius fillet. So I'll go and I'll select fillet. I will program the fillet radius at 0.25 and then I will select the bottom and the left. So I have the basic geometry created and the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put the hole in the center. So what I'll do is I will offset. And there's other construction methods that I can do without having to create geometry, but this is the easiest. And so what I'll do is to start off by offsetting 1.5 inches from the left side to the middle and from the bottom to the middle. And then I'll select circle. I'll acquire the intersection. Remember my O snap needs to be on and my O snap settings need to be set for intersection. And then as far as the diameter, AutoCAD's a little funny. It, it wants to put in radial dimensions. And so I'm going to select diameter rather than compute the, the radial dimension and then type in 1.0. Now that I have that, I'm going to erase my construction lines. And I'm going to create the construction for the slots by offsetting 0.5. So I'll type in 0.5, select the line, select the side, and then I will select this line and this side. And then from the bottom it's 2.5, and so I'll say offset 2.5, enter this bottom line, 
in this side. And it works out to be 2.5 inches from this side as well. I'll draw a circle at this intersection with a radius of 0.125. And I'll do the same here. I'll repeat the circle command by right clicking, click, enter, line command from this intersection to this intersection. I could also use tangent. Tangent would work just as well. And then I will trim. Select trim, hit enter, and then select the parts you want to remove. I'm going to zoom in by turning the wheel on the mouse and then pushing the wheel on the mouse. And that'll give me my zoom and pan options. And it stays in that command. It's what's known as modal. Now that I have that basic construction created, I'm going to copy it. So I'll select copy. I'll use a blue window, which will only select the geometry within it. That way I don't get my construction lines. So I've selected it. It says four objects found. I'll hit enter to end the selection set. Now it wants to know the base point or where I want to move it from. I'll move it from this point here to this point here. I'll hit escape and then I'll delete my construction lines. Now I'm going to put in the center marks. I'm going to switch over to the center line layer and on the annotate tab under the dimensions here I can pin this is a center mark. I'll select center mark and then you have to touch the edge of the circle. Center mark edge of the circle, right mouse click, repeat center mark. So there's my basic geometry. Um, I'll draw the right side view, go back to my object layer, and I can project that over by acquiring that point, and then I'd say about right here. And I can acquire this point too. Sometimes it doesn't always cooperate. It's not really cooperating, so I'm just going to use a direct distance input of 3 inches. And the thickness on it is 0.25, so I'll track out this way, 0.25. I'll track this way, try to acquire that point. There we go. And then my side view is going to have hidden lines that are going to be projected over for these uh, features. And so I'll select the hidden line layer. And then I will get my line command. And what I'll do is I will draw a, a line from here to here. And I'll repeat my line command from here to here. I'll use trim. Hit enter trim this out, trim that out, and then I'll get my line command from here to here, and from here to here, trim, and you can see I've got some leftover construction geometry I'll need to erase. I could put a center line in for the center of this part. So I'll switch over to the center line layer. I'll draw a center line. I can track and go from here to here. Hit escape. Notice that I don't see the center mark. It doesn't appear to be the right line type. I can stretch it out a little bit more. Maybe I'll see it. If not, there's a setting called LT scale. And if I type in L-T-S-C-A-L-E, and I bring this number down, let's say 0.7. Now I see it a little better. And I can kind of adjust this. It creates the center mark right in the middle of the line. So you have a couple of different choices. You can just eyeball it like that, or you can pull the edges, or you can offset uh, set them out. So that's our basic geometry. And let's go through and start dimensioning it now. I'll switch over to the dimension layer. And on the Annotate tab, I have my dimensioning options. And what I'll do is I'll start off by dimensioning 
from here to here, you're going to want to use endpoint object snaps. Don't worry if the text is inside or outside. You can modify it and move it. But I'm not that picky about whether the text is inside or outside. I'm more particular about using the correct dimensions. So uh, there's a few more dimensions. Um, these are linear dimensions, and so a linear dimension can be either vertical or horizontal. If I wanted to do a horizontal dimension, I could select my two endpoints and then place them in a horizontal location. And I can also select an angular dimension by selecting this angle here and this angle here. And then I can place that dimension. And like I said, you can modify these. I can move these inside here. Sometimes my O snap will get in the way, move it around. So sometimes I'll need to turn off my O snap so it doesn't start to bounce around so much. And um, the other dimensions I think you'll be able to get. Um, we can get a radius dimension for this corner. Bring that out. Um, as well as this part right here, part of that slot. You'll notice there's an R value on that. And on this one it's not coming out to three decimal places so if you click on it and then you right click you can adjust the precision to three decimal places and it's after the dot or after the decimal point where that value comes in. And I'll put a couple more dimensions on. I need to turn my O snap back on. Put that dimension on and the diameter dimension. Now I think there's a few more dimensions. I'm not going to go and do every single one because the video will get a little bit too long. So what I'm going to do next is to show you how to take the drawing from model space and put it into paper space or into the title block. And to do that what I'll do is let's save it. And so I'll say file, save as, and um, I'm just going to save this to my desktop. And I'm going to save it. I'm going to change the name to my initials, JC. That's where the XX should be replaced with your initials. And then um, the name of the drawing is going to be Exercise 2-1, or possibly 2-2. Let's say Exercise 2-1. save. If I select the ANSI title block tab, the next thing that I'm going to want to do is to line it up in the viewport. And so it's already working within the viewport. If it wasn't, I could double click in that viewport. And so I'll line that up. And then I'll set the scale at 1 to 1. And once I've set that scale, I'm going to hit this little gold lock and I'm going to lock it. And then I can double click outside of that, what's called a viewport, and I can name this Lesson 2. And I can put my name on it. I'll double click here. And that is Exercise 2. If we want to make the solid model, um, we can go back into model space. And what I would do is turn off the dimension layer. And so what I'll do is I'll turn off my dimension layer light bulb. And it says the current layer is turned it off. So I will turn it off. And then what I'll do is I'll make layer 0 active. And I'll copy the object. Select copy. Select it from here. I'm just going to put it out here to the side and I'll hit escape. And then what I'll do is I'll take a viewport, a three-dimensional view, southeast isometric. And I really don't need these center marks. Um, and so I'm gonna delete these out.
shift select shift click will unselect something so I can go and I can select things to be removed or erased and then see how this arc here is part of the selection set if I hold the shift key and then I left mouse click on it it will be removed from the selection set and then once I've done that what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to my 3D modeling and I'm going to press pull hover click and I'll bring that up 0 0.25 I'll go back to my NSI title block I will turn on my layers and what I'll need to do is switch my view back to drafting and annotation turn on my dimension layer and then I will create a viewport. Now you don't need to create the three-dimensional drawing. Uh, that's what I would consider extra credit. And I just wanted to create it so that those of you who are interested could do that. I created a viewport here. I will double click in that viewport, line up that three-dimensional view, grab an isometric view from it, line it up again and I can also create a visual style on that and then I'll save it again save as exercise 2-1 so that's the mechanical application for module 2